Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in today. We're here on a beautiful river in July. We're in Montana, one of our favorite places to be. We're here with good friend Larry Hardy. Stick around, I think it'll be a great show. That's, ooh, oh, that's yeah. it. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it's clear over here. <laughs> this is the first hole that we came to. And uh, you can see that I'm fishing on uh, this side of the fast water. Ladin's fishing on the other side and we'll kind of show a little bit of both. But uh, you can clearly see some nice uh, fast water. That first line there was right on the edge, the seam between fast and slow. Fast water down through here, good nymphing water. And we did have some fish come up in this too, to our big dry flies. The flow keeps going down, and uh, we fished uh, this area before Aladdin crossed. Uh, we fished over in here, um, and really didn't get any bites in there. That was kind of surprising. It was a nice little tail out, and we didn't get much in there. I think they were just up higher feeding. Um, you can see here this fish that I caught. The, the rise um, is right there, just on that edge, that seam. I think most of the fish were... Uh, feeding fairly actively and they were riding in this uh, slower water and looking for flies coming down on the seam there and that's where uh, this fish hit that's a that's a better fish yeah that's a nice little trout he came clear out of the water for that thing yeah all right nice cutthroat much line out. Yeah. Good fish. Boy, that's a nice fish. Really beautiful cutthroat. Yeah, very cool. Switch to a chubby Chernobyl with a golden body or yellow body. We saw a couple of uh, uh, golden stoneflies hatching, flying around, so I give that a try and that thing came jumping clear <laughs> out of the water. Fun fight, really nice. The fly I caught that fish on is a chubby Chernobyl with a, kind of a yellow golden body. Uh, these are great flies for heavy, fast water because they float like crazy and uh, you can kind of move them and twitch them, give a lot of action to them and uh, fish will still go after them. I've been getting some good strikes with other flies over here. Oh, good heavens, that was a big fish. I got to just be patient <laughs> like that. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. So very similar. We're still fishing the same hole. You can see Larry is fishing about where I was, but certainly on the same side. And here again, you can see the strike splash where Ladin uh, catches a fish. So Ladin, we fished this spot. Didn't catch anything out of there, waded across so that we had a little better angle. There were fish rising all in this back eddy. And you can see there's just a nice little line here where the fast water uh, meets this deeper back eddy. And again, that, that's where we caught several fish, had several strikes. We did catch some out in the fast water, uh, but just a, a good thing. And um, it was nice. We, we were able to catch some fish in this area, get some nice, uh, because it was a pretty straight uh, current across here. You could get a fly going. Uh, but the nice thing about coming from this side uh, once we crossed was that you really could lay a fly on the slow side of this, and that fly would sit there, and right on the seam, it would move really slowly. Um, so, Ladin, this one probably the splash is coming out this way but the fly was more right on the edge of the seam we were using in this hole um, we used some nymphs we did some uh, double flies um, we used a golden stone and uh, so a chubby uh, excuse me a chubby chernobyl that imitates a golden stone uh, because we saw those hatching uh, we also i believe there were some yellow sallies uh, flying around um, so we had sometimes that as a second fly. Most of the fish that we caught, we caught with the golden stone. 
um, and then a few uh, smaller fish nymphing. Might have been the one I just missed and it came back for it. <laughs> Try to get him in the slack water where I can fight him a little bit better over here if he just stays Sorry, over Ladin, here. Sorry, I got jealous. Yeah. I wanted a piece of that fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> Sorry for the blurry picture here, but I wanted to show a, a, a shot from a different angle. So this is from about where Ladin was fishing, looking upriver. And again, just, just so you get an idea of seeing these areas in rivers, realizing that's where fish might hold. Hopefully, again, that will help um, to catch more fish. So you can see easily the fast water. You can see it's pretty shallow, too. You can see right through it. Probably, you know, not going to be a ton of fish unless they're just really actively feeding um, in that kind of water. But you can see right along here, it starts to deepen up all the way across, actually. Well, most of the way across. Um, and then, you know, you have a, a convergence of fast and slow water. You can see almost a little swirl right here. Um, and these are the kind of places right along in here as it just starts to deepen, deepen up in here, um, in this area, and probably all through here that I would expect uh, to see fish um, resting or actively feeding. A lot of times, of course, these back eddies, if you've fished much, you've seen these back eddies will come around. Um, and oftentimes the current will be going back this way. And you can see fish right in here too. Um, sometimes just right out in the middle of these back eddies too. A lot of times, particularly if there's um, dead bugs sitting on the water, um, they sit in this area. That's why there's so much foam. A great thing to look for on a river is foam lines in the current or places like this where a lot of foam backs up. That also means that dead bugs coming in will back up in that area and fish will feed. It's nice slow water, oftentimes tends to be deep and they can just kind of sit there and slurp. A lot of times you see small fish in here, but we've caught some of our biggest fish out of water just like this. I remember one time on Rock Creek, we were fishing a, a very similar type of water with a back eddy and we had mostly been fishing the riffle portion and the seam but we were i think we were even just changing flies and we kind of flopped the fly out we would have been over in this area and just kind of flopped the fly out into the dead water in front of us and sure enough at, after it sat there for a little bit while we were kind of looking at flies a, a really big brown trout took the fly right there in the back eddy, you know, three feet from us with her fly dangling in the water. Beautiful 20 inch brown um, that we caught, that Ladin caught, it was actually on Ladin's line. So um, you just you just never know, back eddies can be places for uh, really big fish sometimes. Come on, guy. Wow. It's a beauty. Oh yeah, gorgeous wow. trout, gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, big cut. Look at the size of that guy. We moved up river. Our little, oh shoot. Gosh, darn it. Mm. This is an interesting little hole, and I would just even really just call it a tiny little bucket, basically. Um, we were starting out with the chubby Chernobyl again that had been pretty effective up until this point. And right away, Aladdin had several strikes on uh, fish in here, decent uh, fish. And, you know, again, it's you're looking, you see the fast water, that's always good, brings food down to the fish there's a nice seam over here although we didn't catch anything in this area kind of another little back eddy and then you know you've got this nice little bucket right in here and really fish um, all throughout this area but the main bucket was right in here uh, of course you a little tricky sometimes getting your fly to sit in there but you would cast up in here and let it float down don't overlook these um, little tiny buckets you get some depth um, cutthroats um, like this kind of water and it's worth giving it a shot. 
the other thing that happened in this little bucket was uh, Vlad uh, missed several fish and maybe they just kind of weren't quite taking this fly. So he switched to a mayfly. Uh, he put on a yellow sally. I said earlier we had seen some yellow sallies and then also put on a little mayfly emerger type pattern. Um, you know, it's, it's early summer and uh, PMDs always a good option this time of year. And um, he ended up hooking a fish and landing a fish and it, it hit right in this area uh, but missed him with this the the bigger fly the chubby switched to some smaller flies caught him on those oftentimes a great way to work a hole um, and uh, just to see if you can catch some fish that that maybe don't um, hook onto the fly uh, that you're using switch and um, see if you can catch them on something else oh darn it Oh, nice, nice. You got him, Ladin. Good job. Yeah, that was cool. That was fun. Thank you. Had to work a little bit for it. Of course, it's not in yet, but oh boy. Yeah, I got him. Nice trout. That was fun. Out of this little teeny hole right here. Gorgeous little guy. There he goes. Again, a lot of fun out of this little pool. Had several chances with the big chubby, but I caught it on the little mayfly. July is a great time to fish with uh, PMDs or mayfly type patterns. And right now I'm using a yellow sally up above. And as a dropper, I'm using a little PMD cripple. And that's what that fish took. I cast into a nice deep riffle and started twitching my fly because that seemed to be what the fish wanted. This stretch of water was really kind of indistinct to a certain degree. I mean, it's just a really long, steady riffle that deepens up in a few areas. Um, this right in here probably is where it, maybe even in here is where it starts to deepen up a little bit, but still a pretty good riffle. And it actually went quite a ways down another maybe uh, 50 feet below this and we had worked our way up this riffle casting and and had a few strikes and worked our way up this all the way across uh, to this edge on this seam you can see there's you know a seam there where the little bit of the riffle meets the edge um, you know but fish were kind of just all over in this and we started working our way up with the chubby and the same fly that Ladin used in the last hole, um, the uh, yellow sally and the PMD emerger. But by this time it was starting to get a little bit later and I think it, those just were tailing off. The fish weren't looking at those as much. We had a brief period where things slowed down and then we, it, this is getting towards the evening. It's still, you know, maybe late afternoon, but sort of towards the evening, getting some shade. And uh, we saw some caddises hatching. So we switched over to caddis and Ladin worked at caddis and just again kept working the riffle anywhere from, from down this line uh, clear over to down this line. And um, all the way up into here as well. It does start to shallow up in there a little bit. But just a just a really nice riffle, and uh, I'm sure there were fish feeding in this, um, and we were able to bring a few up. And this one came up to a caddis. You see, it splashed uh, right here, just kind of the, right in the middle of all that stuff. So just a kind of a thing where we had to work all of the water. Um, you know, the fish would move fairly well uh, from you know to the fly, uh, and uh, just. It worked our way up and then got to this point and finished off working it this way. Um, Ladin caught the fish right there and we caught several more and had several more rises just in that whole stretch right there. Oh wow. Yeah, that was cool. Again, it was twitching it. Yeah. It is. It feels good for sure. Whoa. whoa. We saw a caddis hatch out there in the river, so we tied on this elk hair caddis, and that did the trick. Oh yeah, I got him. Oh wow. Holy smokes. He doesn't like being in the net. 
Look at that beautiful fish. Oh man, that was fun. I just cast out this caddis imitation because we've been trying uh, the chubby for quite a while, didn't have any luck. I tried the caddis, made several casts. I'm thinking this is gonna work. I uh, gave it a little twitch and that thing just exploded on it. Beautiful cut. Any rises down there, Steve? Uh, you know, I hadn't seen any, but then I, I heard a little splash in front of me. This little run was one of the first places we came to when we came down to the river. So we hit it early. This is early in the day. And um, we really didn't get much out of this whole um, area, although it looked decent. It wasn't real deep. And I think maybe with the sun, they just weren't in there or not willing to come up. But we did, while we were kind of hitting this, we saw um, a fish rise. I saw a fish rise over along this bank. Um, so it, it wasn't much deeper. You can see um, it deepens up just a little bit right in there. And then right behind that, right along the edge, you can see there's a little shadow. Um, and that's where the fish rise. You can see the splash of the one that actually took my fly, but I missed this fish. Um, and it was, uh, it looked like a really nice fish. So um, I think there was probably, we, we did see some more rising in here. And um, just uh, one thing to look for, particularly when you have a bright sunny day if you're not seeing fish in typical spots another great place to look is along an edge and of course they helped us these fish helped us by giving themselves away and rising but uh, we still i guess had to see them and look for them um, and then uh, but uh, you know a lot of times fish will use that edge for safety uh, for shade um, and it still had a decent current coming along here uh, bringing food in and then a little bit of a slowdown in the back of you can see some of the I've covered it up but you can see some of the the white um, foam and stuff that indicates a little bit of a, a slowdown in a back eddy so and then the next slide I'm going to show is when we came back hiking our way out in the evening it was getting a little dark it was a little hard to see uh, we fished this hole again and I'll talk about that all right, so this is the same run later in the evening and uh, using a caddis fly. And I did work my way all the way across this and we had I had some bites in here. I think Ladin fished it first too. And um, you know, there was actually some, some decent water here. Not a lot of depth as you can see, it's just barely about to my knees. Uh, but there were some fish in here, nothing real big. The, the fish were still over along the side, even though it wasn't sunny. Um, it turned out that there was just enough depth and enough protection there that that's still uh, where the fish were and even up into here along this edge. Uh, so I went back over, um, just cast to that area. I can't remember if I saw one rising here or not and um, hooked up a nice little fish um, right here along this edge in the evening. So maybe one thing to think about with this is if you uh, first, wherever you first get in, if you work your way up river, um, or downriver from that spot. Um, we do this a lot. We'll work our way up, and, and if we have a good hole, uh, we'll leave some time to come back to that. Um, and particularly if you, uh, you know, if you miss a fish or you know there was a good fish in an area, it's always good to give it a little bit of a break, come back to it, hit it with maybe a different fly at a different time. Um, it's great when you kind of know that there's a possibility of a fish there and you come back um, and hit it again later on in the evening or just later on after a few hours. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, man. That's cool. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, it's a decent. decent one. Yeah. It's all right. I'm happy with that for sure. That was cool. Good fish. That's a good trout. Doc got it. Well, he's putting up a nice fight. Where are you? Oh, missed him. <laughs> there he goes. Yep, that made him go downstream. <laughs> Quick release? <laughs> no, he's still there, but I oh, missed him. Yes. Nice. Man, I did not think it was that big. <laughs> that's sweet. That's a, that's a nice 12 inch trout. 12, Man. 13. Boy, that is a really nice cutthroat. Totally caught me by surprise. 
Here's a view of Montour Creek. This is uh, from the fishing access where we parked and started hiking down to the river. Beautiful scene. It is a uh, really nice and sunny July day. Um, I believe it was in the low 80s. And uh, the CFS, I, I don't know if I officially looked at it, but I'd say it's got to be um, 200 or less just from what we were able to, the ease of crossing and that kind of stuff. So a nice small creek. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of big fish in here, but uh, there's some really nice cutthroats for sure. You know, pretty much throughout the day, we used a standard nine foot five weight fly rod, uh, floating line and uh, dry flies for the most part. We did, um, when there wasn't much of a hatch going on, um, we uh, did some nymph fishing, uh, dropping some nymphs under the dry fly, but um, just kind of standard and then, and then a uh, you know, standard leader, probably uh, 10 foot, maybe a little bit longer, and then some tippet. Um, and this, um, even though it was low, um, there was, um, pretty good amount of color um, to the river. I don't know exactly why, um, but it wasn't crystal clear. And um, so we felt pretty comfortable getting away with uh, using 4X instead of 5X um, or even 6X in some cases in small rivers like this. So, um, you know, that's kind of the standard. And then the flies uh, that we used, the first fly I'm gonna talk about is the Chubby Chernobyl. And this is probably the closest version uh, to what we were using. Uh, the one we had had a little more sparkle in the gold uh, body wrap, uh, but very similar otherwise. Gold Chubby Chernobyl. This one's on reds. There's lots of different versions, lots of different videos you can go to tie this. It's a very popular uh, fly, particularly for Montana, but pretty much all out west too. Uh, represents golden stones, uh, represents hoppers, just all kinds of good stuff. And uh, we caught most of our fish on this and had great success. The other pattern, which we, we caught a few on, but not as much, but it's still a great fly pattern, is a yellow sally. And I just chose this website because it, you know, I looked it over. It looks like a fun uh, website. It has a bunch of different yellow sally patterns. Um, there's some nymphs um, and then some dries. Um, I would say none of these really are like the one that we used. Um, probably the closest would be this last one, uh, but there's all kinds of yellow sally patterns and uh, can be uh, particularly effective um, in the summertime in Montana. Another fly that we had pretty good success with was the PMD Emerger. Uh, I found this YouTube channel. Um, this He's going over uh, the PMD Emerger and this one. Um, happened to look a lot like uh, what we ended up uh, were using. Uh, very similar pattern to this. And again, fairly effective uh, PMD, uh, you know, just a really good fly. Lots of different versions of that in different stages of the life cycle. The last fly we caught fish on in the evening was an elk hair caddis. Um, it had a, a body a lot like that looked a lot like this cream colored body, about size 14. Um, again, these are all fairly uh, common summer patterns in the Northwest and in Montana. This video is part of our YouTube channel, Fishing with Ladin, Fly Fishing TV show. I know it's a long name, but hopefully it gets the point across. We have uh, these videos on how to fly fish in a playlist, detailed strategies for how to help you catch and release more fish, and uh, we're putting out more of these all the time as we put out new trailers. Uh, we try to put out as many of these uh, detailed strategies as we can. So uh, again, what we're looking for here is to um, help anyone who watches to read water, learn about fly fishing, catch and release uh, more fish. We're talking through strategies. Uh, we're looking at how we selected flies sometimes, how we choose the right fly line sometimes, leaders, reading the water, and that kind of stuff. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.